So an interesting report is coming out of Polygon. It's a Phil Spencer interview where he's talking about what on earth is going on in the games industry. If you guys have been paying any attention, the games industry has been a massive mess the past, I don't know, like year, maybe more. Uh, tons and tons of layoffs, a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, Microsoft being included in, uh, you know, those layoffs. They're they're laying off a bunch of people throughout, you know, various di different divisions, different things like that. They're, they're not the only ones. Uh, obviously, you know, it's having a bunch Riot, uh, you know, a bunch of different, um, you know, developers and studios and everything like that. So there's there's a lot going on. There is a an absolute lot lot going on in the industry. So Phil Spencer, at least from their perspective, you know, Xbox, Microsoft, he gives a little bit of a an insight, at least you know, behind behind their thinking. And so we're going to be going through this here in this video. If you guys do enjoy this one, by the way, by the way, be sure to leave a like. It really helps the channel. Subscribe for more if you guys want to uh, stick around for more content. We talk about the games and play the games here on the channel. If you don't like it, it's completely fine. Uh, do let me know why, though, uh, so I can improve the content in the future and all that good stuff. All right, let's go ahead and read a couple different uh, quotes from this article. I'm not going to read the entirety of the article, but I think this will give us a little, at least a sufficient kind of you know scope of of what's being said here. So the first one, throw it on the screen now. He says basically that uh, he'll say that the, the thing that is, has him most concerned for the industry is the lack of growth. He says, when you have an industry that is projected uh, to be smaller next year in terms of players and dollars, uh, and you get a lot of publicly traded companies that are in the industry um, that have to show their investors growth, because why else does somebody own a share of someone's stock if it's not going to grow, right? It's just, you know, stocks 101, investments 101. Uh, <clears throat> the side of the business that, that uh, then gets scrutinized is the cost side. Because if you're not going to support the revenue side, then the cost side becomes challenged. We're a business, right? And just Josh interjecting here, okay, not Phil Spencer. You gotta understand that. <laughs> I mean, these 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 are businesses at the end of the day, right? He says, I've said over and over, I don't get any luxury of not having to run a profitable growing business inside of Microsoft. And we are that today. Uh, but just across the industry, you mentioned it, and, uh, and in sitting here at GDC, I reflect on friends of mine in the industry that have been displaced and lost their jobs and how just, I don't want this industry to be a place where people can't with confidence build a career. So that's why I keep pivoting back to, how does this industry get back to growth? But to your question for us at, uh, as Xbox or any of the teams that are out there, it is really an outcome of an industry that's not growing. It can grow and it will grow again. But you see this time, uh, right now and the implications have human impact and we should all reflect on that and think about it and That's the first quote. I'm gonna throw up a second one up on screen and he says the following I will say every decision we make today and tomorrow is for the better of Xbox said Phil Spencer I know some things sorry sometimes things get weaponized and there's some evil in the background that's making us do things uh, Phil hates exclusives and that's why we're uh, we're like PlayStation right now. Uh, sorry, no, that's why we're like PlayStation and Switch now. Uh, every decision we make is to make Xbox stronger in the long run. It doesn't mean everyone's going to agree with every decision we make, but it is fundamental for how we make decisions. This notion that Xbox can only be this one device that plugs into a television isn't something we see in the Gen Z research because nothing else is like that for them. But, uh, sorry, some of them will have an iPhone, some will have an Android, but all the games and everything is the same. I can still get to TikTok on both of them, at least for now. All of their stuff is available wherever they want, so for Xbox, our brand pivot as we attract and maintain relevance with a younger audience is Xbox is a place where I can find the great games I want to. End quote. So, again, I feel like these two quotes gives you a little bit of a scope of, of, of kind of what's being said here, what's going on. Um, there's a lot to kind of dissect in this, right? Uh, obviously, to hear that, you know, uh, there's a lot of a, a loss, you know, in the games industry right now. And again, that's why there's a lot of people getting cut, a lot of layoffs and stuff. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of factors in, in, you know, factoring into this, right? It's not just the games industry, right? To kind of make it a little bit more, you know, s wider in the scope of economics. I mean, 
economically speaking, everything's kind of, you know, struggling, right? They're, they're, you know, people are, are finding that, you know, cost of living is higher. So they're, obviously they're going to be spending less on, on games. And then game prices are still going up. I mean, I've seen, you know, Final Fantasy uh, VII Rebirth was listed in Canada for almost like a hundred bucks, man. Like just a few years ago, our games were, were like same thing as in, in the US, 60 bucks a game. And they slowly started getting more and more and more. Uh, and now we're at the point where it's like, it's it's almost at a hundred bucks. I mean, they're, I think it was like 93 or 94 bucks it was listed for. And then you add tax onto that, you know, depending on your local, you know, provincial tax, if you're in Canada and that spikes it as well. So when people are struggling to make, you know, uh, ends meet with actually staying alive, living, then, you know, that's gonna factor into their choices with how they spend in, in uh, you know, recreationally. So you got that kind of aspect as well. People are going to have to pick and choose what games do they want to, you know, actually invest in, which games do they not want to invest in. And then from the games industry standpoint, that, that's going to hurt them. So I think it's just like a, it's like a domino effect, man. It's like a trickle effect from like just everything going on in, in the world in general. And it's, it's unfortunate um, that everything is the way it is, but that's, I think that's a huge aspect of it. And then he's talking about, you know, the younger audience, whatnot as well, right? I, I think there's a couple different aspects to that. I think, you know, there's there's a lot of younger audience that are still into your, you know, your typical kind of standard uh, format of, of, you know, games and console gaming and whatnot. It's not just like, oh, you know, I know there's a lot of mobile kind of push nowadays, but you know, I, I mean, I have kids myself, you know, varying ages and whatnot. And, and obviously, you know, um, being, you know, so ingrained in the industry through content creation and stuff, you know, you see a wide variety of different people uh, and how they interact with your videos across the board and just different things like that. So you get a little bit, of, uh, a, a little bit of an insider taste, not as much as them, obviously, you know, in the, you know, at Xbox and studios, but you get a little bit of a taste and you still see that there, there's still, there's still, there's still a love for that, uh, even though there has been, yeah, a big mobile push and stuff so i mean again there's just so much going on so many aspects that it's unfortunate it's unfortunate to say the very least so i don't know i don't want to keep dragging on this video i just kind of wanted to give my my little kind of input as well in there um i will say that i hope that things start to turn around i, I mean listen in terms of xbox you always got to think this right i think out of the big three right xbox playstation nintendo uh, I think Xbox has been kind of struggling for the most part. I think ever since the 360, well, after the 360 era is what I mean. Uh, they, they had a great era for the 360, but then the Xbox One came out, Don Matrix, he kind of, you know, blew it and he kind of, uh, you know, he, he really damaged the company, I think, from a lot of people's perspective with a lot of stuff he was saying and pushing and, and, and just different things like that. Uh, so a lot of people ended up switching from Xbox to PlayStation. I, I knew a lot of people that were exclusively Xbox 360 that made the jump over to PlayStation, um, myself included, actually. I, PlayStation became my main, my main, you know, my main go-to after the 360 era. And uh, I think that's a big factor as well. They've been just, you know, Xbox has been trying to just get, regain their footing. And I think a lot of it too is, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of stuff that has been pushed in games, right? Uh, in, in terms of like, I think, you know, there's a corporate side where they've just lost the touch of creativity in a lot of games and people just long for that, you know, classic kind of feel, right? Uh, I, I, I've mentioned this previously that I really liked that, you know, with Assassin's Creed uh, recently, Ubisoft felt like they kind of went back a little bit more to the roots and and just kind of felt like they had more fun with the game and, and there's been games coming out recently that just felt like again the devs were just having more fun creating the game and it felt less corporate and i think that's what we need to get back to as well and then also you know like there's just there's just there's other elements too where it's you know it's just you know people are trying to push all kinds of ideas uh, through through their narratives and stuff that maybe are not uh, are not are not really sitting with with everybody uh, and and uh, whatnot. I mean, there's a wide variety of different things in the scope of that, so I don't want to get too much into that because again, there's a wide scope of you know narratively speaking. But um, yeah, I don't know. There's, I think there's just a lot of factors. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Again, I've talked way too much. This is a huge topic. I think there's a lot of elements kind of, you know, factoring in just kind of creating the the perfect in a negative sense, the perfect bad storm. Uh, and it's just a, a lot of a lot of kind of hit on, on the gaming industry. So hopefully things can can pick up, turn around and, uh, you know, the industry can get rejuvenated because we need a, we need a breath of life kind of, you know, breathed into uh, into the industry again, because it's just kind of um, I don't, there's many, many aspects, like I said, that's just lacking. So let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I hope to see you guys soon in another one. Tell them friends, game on. Thanks for watching. Hey, you, what are you doing?
Join! Join the Skeleton Army! Do it today! Don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow might never come. The Earth is gonna fade, that's inevitable. The next second of your life's not even promised, so you better think about where you're going, and you might as well just join the Skeleton Army. Plus, we do kinda like you a little bit, so it'd be nice to see you around here. But if you don't want to, hey, you're lost. See you later!